Welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB. And today we are playing this deck, this absolutely abominable pile. Uh, it's a Dovin's Acuity prison deck. It locks the opponent in basically endless hell where you're playing Dovin's Acuity, gaining life and drawing cards every single turn. And the opponent is not doing much. So, the win cons for the deck, we have a Dawn of Hope, which can make soldiers to win the game. We have Clear the Mind, two of them, so that we can basically keep shuffling our deck back into itself over and over and over and never run out of cards. I have this instead of a card like, uh, oh, what's the name of it? I'm blanking, but it's a counter spell that shuffles some cards back in. Where is it? It's four mana. Devious Cover-Up, that's the name of it. I have it instead of Devious Cover-Up because this card, smart opponents can stop casting spells. And then you are in this tough place where you need to counter your own spell, but if they don't give you a target, how do you counter a removal spell? It's like this, this card, actually, you can lock yourself and end up exiling your own things against a smart opponent. So watch out for that. So uh, I took that out, and I went with two Clear the Mines instead. Also, I have an Kaya or Zav Usurper, which can win the game with its minus five, and a Neza Hall, the Primal Tide, to drop some uncounterable 7-7 nonsense. I also just want that no maximum hand size clause. I don't want to run the card that everybody tells me to run in comments, which is a very bad card, and you should not run, and that's Reliquary Tower. Sorry. Apparently I can't spell while typing. Apparently I can't spell while recording is what I meant there. Uh, Reliquary Tower. So this is not a good card, especially not in a deck with cards like Kaya's Wrath that require all these colored sources and absorb. So I don't run it. And instead, I'll use Nezahal if I want a no maximum hand size, but it's also not the end of the world if we have to discard a few times using Dovin's Acuity over and over. The whole rest of the deck gains life and kills things. In fact, there's only there's only one card here without the potential to gain life. Remember, this can destroy your own creatures to gain life. So Dawn of Hope tokens, for example. Uh, Clear the Mind doesn't gain life, and two Mortifies don't gain life. Everything else has life potential. Oh, except for Nezahal as well. Still, you can call this an overreaction, but I hate red decks. I also want to run all my shock lands without feeling them too much. So if I can gain enough life, it doesn't matter if I shock myself to play my cards on time. I run all of the shock and check lands except for two Glacial Fortress. These I take out just so I do not flood on lands that enter the battlefield tapped, and I run some basics instead. So hopefully with this, I avoid those draws that are tap land, tap land, tap land, and don't do anything for a very long time. Nightmare's Thirst may look like a very weak card, but it has some uh, it has some interesting applications with Dovin's Acuity. So when you play the Acuity, you gain two life. When you play the Nightmare's Thirst, then it's one mana for a minus three, minus three, and you get your Acuity back at a very low price of only four mana. So it's a great curve filler so that we can start roping, like looping Acuities as early as turn four. All right, I'm going to play some ranked with this and see how it goes. And the games tend to be long, so we may not have many of them. Let's go play. Hmm. Interesting. I apologize for some strange cropping and scaling there at the beginning of the video. And I think I fixed it. So let's try this hand. It's got some removal spells and counter spell, and here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not quite fixed. What about this? Hmm. I don't know why, but I'm having some issues with uh, the resolution. I had some weird issues when I started the game today. My shortcut for MTG Arena doesn't show up anymore. I'll have to work more on that later. Sorry for holding you up. Um, but yeah, my shortcut looks funny. There's just some weird computer stuff today. Hopefully it doesn't affect the video too much. And here is a Gitu Lava Runner, and a Shock My Face, and a Skewer My Face, and an Attack My Face. Oh, glorious. I'll just uh, pay my two life here and zap that. Thank you. Let's, let's, let's 
let's start working this life gain train in the opposite direction. Pyromancer. Mm -hmm. It's all. It, it hurts. It hurts so much. And off the top. Yes, that's what we wanted. I'm just going to hit that now in case my opponent draws Wizard's Lightning. I want it to take their whole turn to cast it. Another one. Good times. Good times. And another one. Ouch. Actually, that's really painful that they were able to find that many creatures. Let's... Hmm. I think I hold up... Mortify getting this back isn't a big deal right now. Experimental Frenzy dies to invoke the Divine. I have to make sure that I don't take too much damage. So I'm going to Mortify one of these, which is kind of the same as gaining two life, since that's what they would attack me for. But we're in a bit of a tough spot. That... Drawing an extra creature there was so good for the opponent. Oh, that Lava Coil is not good for them, though. That gives me a shot. Would you like to Lava Coil your own Pyromancer? No. They'll instead take me to four life. All right, at this stage, I may as well start playing Dovin's Acuity. And, ooh, I didn't leave up a black. Big mistake. Big mistake, CGB. No. All right. Well, I'm still going to do this. Take that action. Go to five, and let's leave Absorb up. The opponent knows it's really obvious we have an Absorb here because we passed the turn with an Acuity in hand, but I'm going to hit the very first target I can. Okay, we got another land. So we can play that, play this, and leave up Absorb. And that is just fine. And, <laughs> oh, opponent gained 10 life. Must concede game. All right. First, first, first trial passed, even, despite a misplay. This hand is interesting. We have an early removal, a Kaya, which varies in matchup, and a Dawn of Hope, which turns all the life gain into card draw. I'm going to try it. I'm not really, not 100% confident in it. Like, who do I want to be playing against? But then, of course, there's always another red deck to battle. That is a Footlight Fiend, which can be exiled by Kaya which is pretty sweet, or killed by Nightmare's Thirst. And there's Priest of the Forgotten Gods, so our opponent playing some kind of a sacrifice deck, it looks like. And will we be attacked by a Footlight Fiend? The opponent might be thinking about a card like Seal Away that could exile it, and then the Forgotten Gods Priesty doesn't get used, but decides to go in with the Fiend. Now I have a decision to make, whether or not to run out of Dawn of Hope on turn two, and then I can Nightmare's Thirst draw a card on turn three. But if the opponent has a creature, they get to use their Priest of the Forgotten Gods. Uh, specifically, a, a Midnight Reaper would be a real pain. But I think we have to take that chance. Let's run out the Dawn of Hope. The other option was just to play a tap land and avoid taking two damage on a future turn, which could be handy. Ooh, the priest got busy, though. And we have a moment of craving. Hmm. So we can moment of craving away the priest or the fireblade artist. Both are pretty scary cards in their own right. The priest doesn't do too much, though, because I don't have... I don't have any creatures of my own for the opponent to blow up. I could also take two to Nightmare's Thirst, gain back one, and draw another card. Maybe that's not terrible. But our life total is the most under pressure thing. I feel like if we get enough time, everything will be good. So, yeah, I'm going to pick on the Fireblade Artist here. And play the Tap Land. You can yell at me for being slow if you want to. It's okay. I think that plays in the early turns, though, cascade throughout the game. In fact, I know that to be true, so I'm not going to hold back on that kind of thing. 
And the other thing about my the time it takes, you can always watch on 2x speed. 2x speed is, you just have to click that little gear on YouTube and under speed, click 2x. It's one of the best ways for me to watch YouTube videos and I use it to watch Magic players all the time. All right, the opponent is going to pitch the fiends to draw an extra card and make two mana so that they can have a spawn of mayhem. Now we need another black source. Uh-oh. We got trouble. So we have to draw another black card. Oh, wait. No, we're, we're fine. We're, we're just fine. We'll revitalize, gain three life. There we go. Sweet. And then we will... Nightmare's Thirst. Do you... Minus four, minus four. And we'll play this tap land. And there, we dealt with Spawn of Mayhem before getting wrecked by it. Our opponent's not done with us, though. They have a Legion War Boss. They're not finished with us. Not attacking with the Priest of the Forgotten Gods, though. I think they know that I have to remove that, but that is what we call a good top deck. <laughs> that is a good top deck. Well, they're in the deck for a reason. The opponent gets to do two more damage, make two mana, and draw a card. But now that scary board state is dealt with, and we'll see what else the opponent has for us. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, they don't quit. They just don't quit. Okay, I'm going to take two and then draw a card since I'm gaining two back. I do think I need to draw a few more cards to get into this game. So I'm going to pay two life. We're going to Vraska's Contempt, your Legion War Boss, and then we pay two to draw a card. And since everything in the deck gains life, I'm confident I can get it back, but I am getting nervous. The opponent has no lack of beats. All right, down to five. Now it's getting very real. Nightmare's Thirst off the top. So we could play Kaya, go up to seven, then Nightmare's Thirst for three, which could remove the Judith. Then we take one, go back down to six. But we have Kaya, which the opponent can attack or not. Plus we draw another card with this line. I think it's the play. So you can go and I'll just do one at a time to gain as much life as possible if they try to ignore Kaya and she sticks. I'm going to decline for right now, but I'll draw on the next one. I guess it doesn't really matter which one. So now we Nightmares Thirst away the Scourgey Diva. And this is a big turn, whether or not the opponent can close the door. What could they draw off the top to deal four? A Judith would deal two and then another three when I have to mortify something. So this is going to be a, a big draw step for the opponent. They need to keep up and apply more pressure. There's a revitalize off the top. If we get to untap, our position gets so much better. And if Kaya lives, our position gets so much better. The opponent could have sacrificed the token to damage Kaya, but instead they're going face. And that's all. Wow. So we could minus Kaya to remove the token, but I think that plusing Kaya to continue to gain life is where it's at. I, hope you said your goodbyes already. I can draw an extra card, which I think is good here, as long as I still have one more removal spell. Ooh, I also have an absorb now. All right. Well, I'll pass the turn and see what the opponent does with the Fireblade Artist. I could also kill the Fireblade Artist now. That's pretty safe. I don't know how the opponent could kill me if I get rid of the Fireblade Artist first. So yeah, let's just get that off the board before the opponent gets the opportunity to fling this goblin and see what the opponent draws and scoops it up. All right. Well, the One of Dawn of Hope makes another appearance. It's sort of like my fifth Dovin's Acuity, a way to draw cards while gaining life. Clear the mind you don't want in your opening hand. But with a Revitalize and a Moment of Craving, I'm willing to give this hand a shot. I feel like it will hold up well enough against aggro, 
and possibly getting an early Dawn of Hope will be very good if they're a control deck. So I think it's got game both ways, despite a clear of the mind in the opener. And what do you know? It's a mountain. Let's see what happens. Would you like to play a goblin or something? Okay. And uh, I'll play a Dawn of Hope. No plays from turn one for the opponent. Maybe they're on Drakes or something different. No, nope, that's a Pyromancer. Here we go again. So, do I play a Dovin's Acuity? Or is that greedy? Should I just be gaining life? I think I will play the Acuity and just get that road going. We definitely want to draw enough land and enough removal to keep up, and the sooner we start playing the Acuity, the better for that. I think I can take two. But the opponent kept a pretty slow hand for a red deck, which means there's either a ton of lightning bolts here or there's something like Experimental Frenzy. The stage got lit. The Pyromancers have come. Vraska's Contempt off the top. Well, I have another removal for a Chain Whirler, but it also hits Experimental Frenzy. I don't want to get stuck playing it. Um, I don't want to... What I'm trying to say is I don't want to get stuck playing a Contempt here and then need it for a Chain Whirler later. So let's do a Moment of Craving. Main phase so we can return the Acuity. And I'm going to draw the card. I want to keep curving out and I want to keep finding more removal. Second Acuity isn't ideal. But yeah, we need to keep drawing lands. There's a War Boss. Alright. Also, drawing Kaya's Wrath would be pretty devastating, so we want to dig, dig towards that as well. And the stage just got lit. There's a Goblin Chain Whirler. Mortify off the top. So now we're in a tough spot where I don't really want to play any of these cards. Let's say go and just make sure that we Mortify the War Boss before it attacks. We didn't draw the land we really wanted. It's one of the problems here. I guess I should just Contempt, huh? With two Mortifies, I can Contempt here. Why did that... Hmm. I thought it would ask me before going to Attackers. Doesn't it do that? That's very strange. All right. Well, I'm still going to bluff like a Settle the Wreckage and see if I can keep my opponent from attacking with everything. And then I can respond to the Mentor trigger. All right. Opponent not holding back. And the opponent gets another counter there. I thought they'd play around Settle. Oh well. My bad. Kai's Wrath off the top would be nice. Opponent has Endless Gas. There's a Banefire. Nice. Okay, let's see. What can I do? We're mortifying again, then we're going to take nine, so I guess I'm dead here. I guess well deserved. I think I didn't play as well as I should have. Um let's see. I'm trying to think if there's anything I could draw that would change that. I guess I could draw Nightmare's Thirst which would then take out the Chain Whirler and leave me at a higher life total, but I still think I'm dead. All right. Uh, we'll get out of here. My bad, everybody. My epic fails. All right, this hand, I think, has everything we could want. Let's see what we're up against. Footlight Fiend. All right. Let's go with Tapland. I don't think a turn one night where Nightmare's Thirst shocking myself is where I wish to be. And a Hero of Precinct 1. That probably needs to die quickly, although I drew a Kaya's Wrath. But I don't want the game to spiral out of control in any way, so let's just get that going right away. Goblin Instigator. Probably a Heroic Reinforcements style deck. I'm going to get Acuity on the board right away and get that thing moving. 
The one of Dawn of Hope. It's been, I think, at the top of our deck every game. Opponent has their third land. I wonder if they have any other black cards or if this is something to make Hero Precinct 1 better. And a history of Benalia. Okay. Now I'm really... They definitely feel like a Heroic Reinforcements deck. So let's hold up an Absorb, say, Go, and set up Kai's Wrath. I mean, we can take a punch, but then if we blow up their board, you're feeling pretty good. Legion's Landing, no thank you. Don't want the opponent to have that access to basically a never-ending swarm of things. This is okay, so the opponent's going to Conclave, or maybe either Venerated Loxodon or Conclave Tribunal. That's got to be the only reason they don't hit attack with all here. Nice. Hiya. So yeah, Boros with Footlight Fiend, Hero Precinct 1, Relentless Raptor, which is it's kind of a beefy critter to be honest. How to deal. I Hmm. I could Okay, the opponent's gonna scoop it up. There's like so many different ways to deal with it to also get back acuity and set up the next turn. It's taken me a second there, but I think it would have ended on Vraska's Contempt. Another opportunity was Kaya and Nightmare's Thirst, which actually is probably better. Kaya plus Nightmare's Thirst that turn. This hand looks fun. Again, clear the mind. We still haven't gotten anywhere near having to use it. Maybe we can cut it if in ranked everybody scoops so much, which they seem to, so. It's it's usually in like constructed event that people just never seem to scoop and I need to keep recycling the deck to do what I need to do. Oh yeah, opponent shot me a hello. Hello to Poseidon. And let's get things going with Dovin's Acuity. Get me those cards. So, Black White, what are you up to? Are you Esper who didn't draw blue mana? Kaya. I don't have anything to kill Kaya yet. I, heard you had some dead things. I, to I have to be careful about playing this Clear the Mind now, because if it gets exiled, I can't keep recycling the deck. But we'll main phase this Revitalize and get the Acuity back. Ooh, awkward. All right, tap land go. So, Vraska's Contempt, of course, being our way to deal with things like this. We do run all four, but it can take a while to find, and it is Esper Control that we're dealing with here, so... Strong disadvantage. Not a lot of personal hope uh, in this one for me. We only have a couple, like a handful of Absorbs, and the opponent's typically pretty good at countering all the things. Syncopate they are, just exiling it. You don't see as many syncopates these days. It wasn't run in any of the list in the list in the top eight at the Pro Tour, so everybody seems to be on the negate absorb plan, but here we are. Okay, that's game. It isn't a fight we can win. Okay, I think I will try this. We don't have any black cards or black mana. I don't know. This is weird. But I think we can get there. We have a lot of ways to see more cards as long as we find one more land. Hmm. I'll just play that. Say go. Decide whether or not to revitalize. It's tempting to revitalize after we play Acuity, of course, but I may want to play it. It just depends on what our opponent's up to. If they go Sovereign's Bite, I probably just want to play this, but they're taking the slow road, so... 
think I'm okay paying two life and casting Dovin's Acuity here. Hey, there you are, Vraska's Contempt. What? Where were you last game? What's going on with that? Taking a break? Taking a little, little breather? So there is a lot of tension between Absorb and Dovin's Acuity with it having to be played on your main phase and get it back on your main phase. That's why Absorb is only a two of. It's really trying to be for the late, late game with this deck. But we keep drawing it early, much like the Dawn of Hope. So we've had kind of a weird sample size of games where we have all of our, the cards we want later in the game early. And the early game cards have been kind of clunked up because of that. So with my opponent doing nothing, what's about to happen? Rekindling Phoenix? I'm not scared of that. At the same time, I don't really want to get Dovin's Acuity back right now. So I think the best thing I can do here is just clear my frickin' mind and draw the card and let my opponent do whatever. I don't think that they can hurt me too badly if I tap out. If, if this is red-black mid-range, which is what I'm used to playing against, I kind of want them to play something, so I have something to contempt and get Acuity back. But no, it's Grixis. Okay. Weird. I guess I got swerved. Man, best of one can make you feel like an idiot sometimes, because you can only go off the couple of things that you see, and then... Just stuff like this happens that makes you go, what is the matter with me? Not that it's a big deal. Absorb would have just hit the Thought Erasure, and the Thought Erasure hit the Absorb, but the opponent has some information, and maybe they can use that against us. Why wouldn't I leave my blue mana up, game? Let's revitalize. Draw Nightmare's Thirst, but we're up against Grixis Control, so now I'm skeptical if any of that is going to do me much good. Depends on how many counters they run. They kept a hand with only one blue, so... I don't know if they're going to be Sinister Sabotaging me anytime soon. Carnage. Sure. Let's discard a Nightmare's Thirst and a Kaya's Wrath, because I don't think those matter very much. opponent might have another carnage. What am I on? Six mana? I'll just invoke the divine my own thing. Return it. It's kind of like cycling the invoke the divine. Oh wait. It didn't it tap my darn blue again. How frustrating. Off my game today. So I'm going to be honest. Um, I'm very tilted by the recording the intro with the weird cropped thing on the computer. Stuff like that does not leave my mind. It's always, like, on my mind. I think it has a lot to do with how badly I'm performing at magic, which really, really angers me. But let's try to tap careful. This definitely leaves up enough mana, so we'll play you. Opponent seems fine with that, and then we'll see if they are featuring negate or whatever here. Okay. And got him. All right, not a counter spell yet, not yet. A kindling phoenix. Yep. Our opponent's gone to the space where they know they have to resolve some cards. All right, let's go with go with you. They know about this other contempt, so I'm sure they have another thing to play after this. I've already seen all the cards I'm going to see, so let's play you. Hello. Alright. There we go. Let's go after the Phoenix. It is risky to keep returning the Acuity to my hand um, like that, but it's kind of the cycle we're in right now. The reason is, of course, Thought Erasure, cards like that. And now the opponent has another Phoenix. It's still going to take a long time for the Phoenix to beat me to death, though. Let's see if the opponent has a counter yet. They finally found another blue, but they didn't leave it up last turn. Just have to keep testing them. That's a lot of land. 
Let's see if we can revitalize here and get more acuity. All right, now we have Kai's Wrath plus Moment of Craving. And now we can leave it on the battlefield, which is probably the safer place when our opponent is showing that they don't have any counter magic. And we're up to 35, so it's going to take a long time for that Phoenix to beat us down. Daredevil. Oh, you're going to invoke the Divine. That's rude. Well, that's a reason not to leave it on the battlefield. I guess it's safe nowhere. We'll have to try to draw another. And you're still looking around in my graveyard. Do you have another daredevil? It's possible. We're just doing the graveyard review in here. We should probably go for this Wrath right away. If we wait, the opponent might draw a Thought Erasure, which could be very bad. I'm going to hold the last Swamp for a Nicol Bolas, which I'm sure is just lurking somewhere, so I don't have to discard. Well, it depends. It depends what I draw, because if they play a Bolas and I can just go Craving Craving, then why hold something that has to get discarded? There's still nosing around in my graveyard. So, yeah, there's the other daredevil. What are you going to use it for? Am I clear the mind? Okay. You're gonna cast that on yourself? I guess you get to draw a card, but then you don't have a graveyard. I guess it all depends what's in your deck. That's okay, I'll find another way to beat you. Ha, funny. Um, I guess. Ooh, a land. You don't say. All right, keep it going. I mean, I'll Nezahal or Dawn of Hope you too. But really, I'm leaning towards the clear of the mind shouldn't even be in the deck since the like the it's it's so different how playing in a constructed event, people don't concede, so you do need something like this in inevitability. But in ranked ladder, people are in a hurry to do whatever, so they they want to get to mythic, so they concede right away, most of the time. Interesting. I'm going to just hang on to one of these moments of craving then. Why'd I take the damage anyway? Because I was hoping to draw, like, a Dovin's Acuity or something else. All right. Nightmare Thirst, sure. Another way to kill the Daredevil if we want to. I'm not too concerned about the life total. I'm mostly concerned about getting to reuse cards. But... If the opponents... We'll see if they cast another Carnage on me. I also want to get cards out of my opponent. And make sure I use things in the right spots. Oh, well... That's no good. That's no good. Hmm. No thank you. <laughs> I could kill it. I or no, I can't kill it. I can't even kill it there. Just just no thank you. No thank you. Alright, give it another shot. Vivian Reed thing is usually Golgari or Sultai, which is an interesting matchup. So at least we'll have probably something neat going on here. We've actually had a nice mix of matches in ranked. It's kind of amazing how redundant um, constructed events get, but those have actual monetary prizes. This is a rant I sometimes get on on stream, but maybe some of you haven't heard it. The so constructed events like you win gold if you if you can usually get to four wins which isn't very hard you win gold and you can spend that on cards when new sets come out you don't have to buy them you can just spend the gold but what people do instead is grind the ladder and the ladder doesn't really have prizes like five packs is nothing it, it's really absolute dirt 
to be honest. Um, so I always find it pretty amazing that most people play the ladder. But then here we are on ladder, there is a better variety of decks where you play 40 to 50% of your games against mono red in constructed events. Mm. I see how it edits the how it um, affects the content, and I know some people have been a little like your content's getting repetitive, and I do care about the content, so that does that is something I'm listening to. I hear you, uh, but at the same time, I'm cheap. I don't want to spend money on a new set. I really don't. So let's remove this. Let's return the acuity. Let's play this tap land, and I also at the same time want to give all of you the kind of variety like all the different decks. I want to be able to craft all the silly mythic rares and stuff so that I can play all kinds of decks. Oh, wow. Scoopsies. Oopsies, they scoopsied. So I'll try this. We'll draw land. It will be great. Wells. Oleo. What are we up to? All right. Another card you can play in this deck, possibly over something like Revitalize, is a Thought Erasure. For me, that's just going too close to Esper Control, though. And then you just want to... I just want to turn my acuities into Insights and play regular Esper Control at that point. So I think it just leads a different road. I think, it, I, I think it's one of those slopes that will take you elsewhere. Are we playing another Control Mage? Black white again. Yeah, good variety of decks so far here on the ladder, which is nice to see. I've kind of forgotten. I just figured it would be all mono red here as well. All right, I'll keep drawing with the revitalizes then. There's Dawn of Hope. Dawn of Hope though is probably Mortify Bait if I just run it out now. So I'll pass on that. The Bell Haunt. I don't really want to discard a card or give my opponent value. So the cleanest answer is an Absorb. And then pass it on back. Now the opponent without another Bell Haunt in this instance. So let's go ahead and play the Dawn of Hope. We can try to defend it at least from one Mortify if we want to, or we can let it die. I'm actually pretty okay with letting it die. But it doesn't die. Hallelujah. I thought for sure it would be like, boom, Mortify that. Because that's how I play my Black Whites. Oh, what do you know? What do you know, Joe? It is Esper. Mm. That makes the matchup much worse when they also have access to counter spells. No. Hmm. Sounds fun. They probably have another one, but now at least I'm ahead of the game a little bit. And with a creature to exile, I actually get to draw a card with my Dawn of Hope. It's like cheating. It's so good. Now imagine that Kaya's uh, plus one says that you gain two life, exile two things, and draw a card. Is it now the best Planeswalker ever? I think so. I think so. So if there is another Teferi, we can try to Contempt it. If it resolves, we can Dawn of Hope. No, it's a Bell Haunt. I think at that, this point, the Kaya's Wrath is the expendable one. Nightmare's Thirst. I don't think I can gain enough life, though, to make that good. I could cycle it and just draw a card with it, but I may as well mortify the Bell Haunt, exile it, and then draw the card. So, the only problem with that is if our opponent plays a Search for his Kanta. But, I think Teferi is much more threatening than a Search for his Kanta, and Kaya can keep a Search for his Kanta in check, so I'm going to save my Vraska Contempts and cast the Mortify. Ropity dopes Hmm, is there a negate? What are you thinking about? I wonder. So, when I say, what are you thinking about, which I say in a lot of my videos, I'm not being mad at the opponent for thinking. 
I am trying to get information from what they could have to think about in this moment. Sometimes that can give away what's in the hand, uh, what they are playing with, if you can put together what they would think about in a spot like this. So in that case, it's like, are they thinking about a cast down? Probably not. A cast down doesn't really achieve anything. Are they thinking about a spell pierce, perhaps, which I could pay for to keep me from drawing a card? That might make sense. Another one. They just don't quit. Gotta get rid of my Nightmare's Thirst now. So is it worth using a Vraska's Contempt to protect Kaya? I'm not sure. I might just be better off using Dawn of Hope to make a token to block. Now that is where something like a cast down could take out the token. Or a moment of craving. Leaving my Kaya taking a bump. Which I don't know if that matters too much. Our opponent only has three cards in exile, and Kaya is very unlikely to win the game. The biggest effect she has is keeping Search for his Kanta from flipping. And then the opponent's taking it to Rope Town. Now, in this case, I don't think they're thinking about anything. I think they are reading Reddit. So whether or not to contempt a Basilica Bell Haunt when there are Teferis to worry about. Is this Esper Midrange? Or is this an Esper Control deck that runs Bell Haunt? These are all good questions. And I think what I'm going to do is plus Kaya, doing mostly nothing. I don't want to exile my own things, for example. And saying go. I think my plan is to at least threaten to make the Dawn of Hope token, or just let Kaya take the bump and draw more cards. But really I want to leave up mana for Vraska's Contempt if the opponent goes for a Teferi, or if they do nothing else and fight on the end of their turn instead of on mine. Which means letting Kaya take three. I think if I make a Dawn of Hope token, my opponent will respond by killing the token. Kaya will still take three before I can block with it and I don't achieve anything. Chemistry's Insight. Wow, main phase? That might change things. And now that's in the graveyard where Kaya can exile it. That's pretty nice. The opponent does not have absorb mana up. And this is definitely a nod away from Esper midrange and towards Esper control. I think my opponent found a Mortify. They're reading Dawn of Hope. It's usually a sign. But, yeah, I'm still planning to let Kaya take three and hold my Contempts for Teferis. And try to cast them on nothing else. It's a little risky. Our opponent probably has Thought Erasure in their deck. But that's another reason to always have two of them available. How did you do that? <laughs> Kaya wants to know how that was done. Is that what she said? How did you do that? Crazy. All right, so end of turn, let's revitalize and draw an extra card. Ooh, Nightmare's Thirst. That can go after the Bell Haunt. That is really good right now. Okay, in response. And it was a Mortify. Opponent was trying to pick the perfect spot to play around Counter Magic. In the meantime, though, I do get another set of cards. And another Contempt. And I get to exile the Chemist's Insight and the Bell Haunt. Too bad I don't have the way to draw a card anymore for it. But that went okay. That went okay. Let's see if the opponent has any plays. No? Clear the mind. Let's exile this. Do I attempt to clear the mind here? With three Vraska's Contempts in hand, I'd rather get those into the graveyard, get them spent, get them thrown at Teferis or other threats. So let's hang on to it. 
opponent finds another Chemist's Insight. Okay. And are they going to flash it back now to avoid Kaya? I guess I would. Settle the wreckage into the yard. Going a little old school. You don't see as much of it anymore. Alright. Let's see what the opponent comes up with now. You gotta think that they're hanging on to a Teferi or waiting for a counter spell. Or that they have some other card like a Lyra. They've already shown some mid range tendencies with those bell haunts. Oh, well, there's a good draw. I guess we play this out and see if the opponent's willing to counter a Dovin's Acuity. They are willing to counter a Dovin's Acuity. So, do I clear the mind? Let's exile these. No, I'll leave up Avraska's Contempt for the opponent going for a Teferi. And kick it back to me. We're just going to do this. We're going to keep doing this. Okay. End that search. I guess I could be exiling some of these. The cards that don't do much. But I don't know. Our opponent already showed us these bell haunts, for example. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to keep saying go. I really want to spend these contempts. And if my opponent thought erasures me and takes clear of the mind, I still have another. Here we go. Here we go. Contempt you. Nobody likes you. Get out. Get out. Get exiled. Away. All right, there's the absorb. Let's move the stack, because I want to. Let's try that again. Thank you. So there, now with two contempt spent, I feel much better about clearing my mind. How many absorbs? One absorb two absorbs. So still plenty of room for absorb in our opponent's deck. But if they counter the clear of the mind, that's one less counter for the next Raska's Contempt. What are they thinking about here? They must have a land. Yep. And they probably drew it off the Teferi or they would have played it first to fight the counter war. Unless that was a mistake. So let's attempt to clear the mind. opponent might counter it, but I don't think it's worth a counter, to be honest. It's just a random card with a little bit better card threat density. And we draw Dawn of Hope. Wow. It's pretty lucky. I suppose we can go for it. If the opponent has another Mortify, what, we make a token? We didn't get much out of it. But it is what it is. We still have Raska's Contempt open. We can make a token. Exile your Absorb. And no Mortify. Alright. Maybe the opponent's waiting for me to tap out. Well, I'll at least test the theory. Okay, still no Mortify. Now let's send in the token. We save our Kaya activation till after, so we get to exile something. All right, so here's a moment of craving. Just trying to decide if I want to somehow keep the opponent from gaining the life, but I don't think it matters. Now I could also minus the Kaya to draw a card, which is probably good enough. I mean, there's 11 cards in this graveyard here, so. And I can use the Dawn of Hope to draw. Feel the pain of every outcast thing. <laughs> and just having more cards. This, this is a battle over cards, after all, in the long run. Esper control versus whatever the hell it is I'm playing. Dovin's Abomination. 
Field of Ruin. Well, good thing I'm not playing in Azkanta. But I do have all my basics on the field. The opponent may not know it, but if they Field of Ruin something, I don't have something to fetch. But I would have something else to exile. Alright, let's make another token. I imagine my opponent will have many removal spells that we'll have to fight through with these Dawn of Hope tokens. Let's see what happens. Another moment of craving. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll go ahead and pay two life for this. I'm at 53. Should be in pretty good shape. All right, exile those two, end the turn. The opponent's probably also waiting on Teferi. Little do they know, we do not play Teferi. They are even more ridiculous in our ways of attempting to win the game. Okay, Kaya of your own. The only thing down here is a clear the mind, so whatever. We lose the endless loop, but that's okay. That's okay. Whether or not to even try to Vraska's Contempt this card, right? I don't know. Is it even a big deal? I'm going to keep trying to crank out Dawn of Hope tokens and draw cards instead, I think. Fight my way through the opponent's removal. I'm not very scared of Kaya. I'm not putting that much stuff up for Exile, for example. And I can just try to beat you down with these tokens. Everyone that hits, I draw more cards. Okay. I imagine we may see a Kai's Wrath now. There's the clear the mind. And a Godless Shrine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Having seven available only really leaves up a Mortify, but it's still fine. Like, I don't think we should ever be shy about uh, shock landing for the rest of the game. If we're going to play a shock land, we'll pay two life gladly. Because you never know what you might need the mana for in a big counter war. And we'll end the turn. Interesting that I could Kai's Wrath myself to draw more cards. I wonder if that will ever come up anywhere ever in life. Sure. Take your pick. I'm pretty sure if you don't start getting rid of the Vraska's Contempts, you're going to have a hard time ever winning the game. Mm-hmm. And they keep on top. Interesting. Here's the Kai's Wrath. They have 13 cards in exile. What else? What would you like to do? The slow and endless Esper Control War. Our opponent finally buckles down and Vraska's contempts Kaya. I don't think they wanted to do that. <laughs> but they should. There's nothing else that they can really contempt. They forgot to exile my Vraska's Contempt. Why? They don't have Dire Fleet Daredevil in here. What could possibly be the reason? Alright. I'm going to keep waging war on Kaya over here. Until she's dead. Our opponent's down to one card. Revitalize. We'll pay two life for this. End the turn. Just work this Dawn of Hope. Oh, is that a Mortify? It is. So do we make the tokens? I think my opponent's last card is probably a Kaya's Wrath, so I'm probably be I'm better off drawing the cards than making the tokens. So let's start with a Revitalize. And let's pay two for that. 
invoke the divine. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can Nightmare's Thirst our own thing and draw two cards and draw a card for it. We could also make one more token. We can also just go for Vraska's Contempt on Kaya and draw a card with it. And then if the opponent goes for Teferi being their last card, we have a Vraska's Contempt for it. I'm gonna make myself scarce. More cards, more cards. This way also Kaya can't exile the Dawn of Hope. So we can shuffle it back in with the Clear of the Mind. As well as two other Contempts. Well, now we have an Absorb, so... We can hang on to that absorb. Just picking them apart, little by little, piece by piece, until there's nothing left. I think the Nightmare's Thirst can go, though. I think so. But there's something to be said about having more play than Kaya's Wrath to possibly kill my own thing and take away a moment of craving. So we'll drop a Kai's Wrath. And the opponent's going to scoop it up. Facing a full grip. Thank you for watching this video. It will probably turn out a little long with a few misplays. And uh, I still found it to be pretty fun in the end. So I think you'll enjoy it. You're also going to hear me shill a few products. In honor of this being Esper, I've got three products to show off from hauntedflower.com. Where the promo code CGB will save you 10%. These are... Gideon's Pocket Notebooks. These are great for keeping life totals or just dotting deck ideas. They're just, uh, there's four of them in a pack and they're super thin and light. You can shove them in your pocket or the outside pocket of a backpack. So that's our white uh, promo. Our black promo is a skull necklace, the mana symbol necklace for black mana. So you Liliana or for me, old OG Nightmare fans might want a black mana necklace to show your allegiance. And then the last card is this blue mana wallet with a little blue mana symbol on the front, Magic the Gathering, and the new official logo here on the back. Perfect for credit cards. There's also a cash pocket and great for just being like, my ID, I'm in. All on sale at hauntedflower.com. Remember to use the promo code CGB to save 10%. If it's actual magic cards you're looking for, remember to check out Flipside Gaming. Promo code CGB, 10% off. Thank you to everybody who's used that code. I've been pretty amazed by the um, response on that. That's very helpful. And it helps me, hopefully, put some dollars in this wallet. As you see, I has no dollars in it. So thank you very much for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. If Goodbye. you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel or leave a comment. You can also support the channel on Patreon for special perks. Links are in the description. Our sponsors are hauntedflower.com and flipsidegaming.com. Haunted Flower sells officially licensed MTG apparel and accessories, and Flipside Gaming sells MTG cards and supplies. You can save 10% on either site with the promo code CGB, and it supports the channel at the same time. See you next time for another day in the arena. For now, it's me, it's CGB, signing out.